So this is a uh, MATLAB. When you fire it up, this is what you should see. Um, if you can't quite see this, then you're going to need to click on the layout menu and choose um, default setup. Okay, so if you click on that, uh, default is the option. The other thing I'm going to do is go down to where it says command history and choose docked. And um, that's going to pick up another another screen um, in the lower um, uh, right hand corner called command history. So what we've got here, we've got this command window, which is the main window in the middle, okay? And that's where you MATLAB, uh, it's where you enter commands and, um, and it's where you see outputs as well, okay? Um, when you type a command at the prompt in here, then obviously that's where you, um, you must follow by pressing enter to actually get it to do something, okay? On the left hand side here we have the current path, or, or the current path which is of course the top, and then this is the folder in which we were operating with various files. We'll talk about how MATLAB integrates itself with the file system uh, in a, in, in, yeah, when, we, when we move on to uh, I think the chapter 3. We then over on the, um, on the, the right hand side we have the workspace which is where all our variables live. Okay, and we just clear the workspace. Okay. Um, and that's where our variables live as we as we go through the, the the process of using MATLAB. Okay, and then down here, as I mentioned, this is the command history. So these are the commands that I recently entered into MATLAB, and you can go backwards and forwards and use them in you know use them again. For example, if I drag this one out here and press the command, I get uh, I follow that command. So let's um let's uh, move on. Okay. If you want to get help in MATLAB, just before we start, okay, there's a button up here called Help, and this introduces the help um, system in MATLAB, which is very extensive. There's a big uh, MATLAB documentation. You can see there's all sorts of different um, uh, categories in here, and obviously if you click on MATLAB, you can see all sorts of different aspects you know, of how to do various things in MATLAB, Simulink and the various other tools and parts of MATLAB. Okay, any function that you want to um, look at, you can just um, search for search for them, and it'll give you a list of the various functions. So, for example, if I search the help for I don't know square root, which is a function in MATLAB, obviously it gives me some details of what the square root function does, and how you write it, and how you do the syntax of the square root. Okay, so let's close that out. We don't need that anymore. Okay, the other way to get command is where you type help on a topic. So if I did help square root. Um, I give I get a bit in the w uh, window, and if I do talk square root, then it opens that help file that we saw al already. Okay, so there's a, there's a, another couple of ways of doing help. Um, to clear the screen, to clear the command window, you type clc, and that gives you a, a, a basic command window um, going back to zero. Okay, so that's MATLAB and its environment. That's how to get help. Let's do some simple arithmetic. So let's Let's do 2 plus 3 times 4, okay? Now, that press return, that gives us an answer of 14. And that indicates that that's different from 2 plus 3 times 4, okay? Clearly, MATLAB follows the correct order of operations, okay? You've probably heard of POMDAS or PEMDAS. Um, basically, any time you... Uh, you uh, do a command, it'll do the multiplication first, then the addition. So obviously 3 times 4 is 12 plus 2, gives us 14. Whereas this one, you know, we've, got, we've got some parentheses in here. So it does the 2 plus 3 first, then times 4, giving us an answer of 20. So bear that in mind um, when you're doing it. So that's parentheses, then the orders, the multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. Okay. Now for very large numbers, or very small numbers... Um, MATLAB will use uh, scientific notation. So, for example, if I type one divided by ten thousand, we're going to you see it's one times ten to the minus four. So that e is times ten to the minus four. Okay. And clearly, if I also write, I don't know, uh, one. Uh, let's go for I don't know, lots of thousands. Um, you see, it's one times ten to the power of ten. Um, so, for large and small numbers, it uses um, scientific notation. With trigonometry, it works more or less as we think. So to to, get, to create the sine of of uh, pi divided by six, okay, um, 
you, that's 30 degrees. If we press return, we get um, 0.5, which makes sense. Okay. Notice that this is in radians. If we wanted to do it in degrees, we actually do sine d and then 30, and that should give us the same answer. Okay. So we, MATLAB by default works in radians. If you want to do stuff in degrees, you must use the d suffix. And so obviously we could do cos 2 times pi. Okay. And obviously cos d 360 which is what 2 pi is, obviously that's also 1. And then to go the other way, to get the arc tangent or the arc uh, sine or the um, arc cosine, you type A and then um, cosine or tan. So the arc tangent of 1 it gives us that. Okay, or if, if we wanted to do the arc cosine of, of 1, we get should get or 0 or 2 pi and so on and so forth. Or with I sine of uh, 0.5 should give us pi by 6 which is 30 degrees a sine d 0.5 30 degrees okay so like I notice that um, MATLAB has a command has a command called pi okay which gives us pi um, and uh, and um, and that's that although it only shows four decimal places pi is actually um, you know, much more precise than that in MATLAB's uh, brain. Okay, um, and notice that these all these commands that I've been using sine and cosine. You type it sine, and then you open a bracket, and then you enter the, your your um, argument, which is what that thing is in the brackets. Okay, and this is how a function works in MATLAB. Sine is a function, and the thing that I'm passing to the function in this case is pi divided by six. Okay, and obviously if I change that to a different value, I get a different answer. Okay, notice I mentioned square root earlier, or well, square root. Obviously, if I do square root to 16 again, square root is the function, and 16 is the argument, and so obviously that's going to give me four. Okay, so exponential functions and logarithms. Well, um, that's basic. That's quite straightforward. Again, um, let's do two to the power of 16. Um, so I'm using shift 6 to get the caret symbol and I'm typing 16 and that will give me 65,536. Okay, that makes sense. And I can do 2 to the power and if I use brackets I can actually put minus numbers in here. So this is a 2 to the power of minus 3 and I get 0 0.1250. Okay. The parentheses around the negative 3 are not absolutely necessary. But it shows it's good practice because obviously clearly what can go in here could be a number of different things and so it's just good practice to put the parentheses around them so like i said square root is a built-in function okay so if we dive in square root of 64 we should get eight which is um whoops if i do if i entered it correctly that would notice that's what an error looks like it spots an error. If I wanted to find the cube root or something, then I actually type nth root, okay, where n is the number that I want to find. So if I type in nth root, I want to find the cube root of 8. 8 is the number I'm trying to find the cube root, of, the, the root of, and I want to find the third or the cube root of it. So clearly, if I do that, I get, should get 2. If I wanted to find the fourth root of 8, 8, 4, that will give me that answer. So if I multiplied 1.6818 four times, I would get 8. We could try it. 6818 times 1.68 times 1.6818 times 1.6818. Notice obviously I'm only going to four decimal places. There we go. So 8.001. 8 now, if we wanted to find e to the power of something, we actually have to use exp, okay? So if I wanted to find e to the power of 3 over 2, that's what it gives me this. So this is e, um, which you've probably, you know, you've heard of e, I'm sure, is part of an exponential, okay? 2.71, uh, um, it's that's the value of e. And obviously you can do logarithms, so if we, went, if we did logarithms the other way, so this is logarithms with respect to e, okay? Oops, x x3 this should obviously the logarithm of e to the power of 3 should give me 3 okay and if i want to do logarithm of base 10 which is on what's on your calculator 
okay then uh, I have to like log 10 so yeah notice on your calculator on your normal scientific calculator log is equivalent to um, log 10 in MATLAB okay and on your calculator you'll have a button that says LN which is natural log and that's equivalent to log in MATLAB okay so this log command is LN on your calculator and log 10 in MATLAB is log on your calculator okay So there are lots of other um, elementary fundamental mathematic functions, okay? And if you type in lfun, um, you'll get a... Oh, sorry. Doc lfun in the window. And you should get a, 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 a help document with lots and lots of mathematical commands. You can see some basic elementary math functions. So there's all the trigonometric ones. So you've got your obviously your signs and signs and degrees. You've got the hyperbolic signs, various other cosecants, cotangents, that sort of stuff. There's your logarithms with your real powers, your square roots. Um, you've got absolute value, ABS. So obviously if I go back to the command window and typed in, let's minimize that down. If I typed in an absolute value of minus 10, clearly that's going to be 10. Okay, so you can see there's lots of different commands. Um, you can do so ABS angle gives us phase angles complex numbers um, which you haven't covered yet but that, that's where that, those are there um, and various things for rounding and fixing numbers and stuff round round up round down and so on and so forth okay <laughs>